Okay, today I want to talk about question generation, which is quite a niche topic within natural language processing, but it's also been quickly gathering a lot of attention in the NLP community in recent years. So let's first understand what question generation is all about. On the screen here, I have given an example of a large passage of text. If you get a chance to read the text, you will realize it is an extract from a review about a novel called A Bit of Everything. The aim of automatic question generation is to develop a system that takes a passage of text and produces a good quality question based on the text, such that the answer to the question can be worked out from the passage. For example, a good question here might be, what role does Dura's death play in this novel for the reviewer? But why would we want a good question generation system? Well, question generation systems are super useful in an educational setting, as large amounts of assessment material to test students can be generated by selecting various comprehension passages for which a question generation system can produce good questions. Okay. So let's summarize what we are hoping to build. To put it as simply as possible, we want to build a question generator system that takes a passage of text as its input and then is able to generate a good quality question based upon that passage. Let's consider what model architecture we want to use for this question generator system. If any of you watching this video have had a little bit of experience in natural language processing, then you all know the answer is obvious. All state-of-the-art systems for various NLP tasks such as summarization, machine comprehension and machine translation are all based on the transformer architecture. So it makes sense that we should also use a transformer-based architecture for our task of question generation. For those of you who may not have heard of the transformer architecture, let me give a brief overview of the transformer. So this is what the overall transformer architecture looks like, as introduced in the Attention is All You Need paper in 2017. There are two main chunks to this diagram. Over here on the left, we have the transformer encoder, which processes the input into some embedding representation. And then on the right, the transformer decoder takes the processed input to generate the output sequence. The main selling point of the transformer is this multi-head attention mechanism that is able to parallelize a large number of operations. If you want to understand how the transformer works better, do check out our video on the transformer too. However, we don't train the transformer model from scratch, but we use pre-trained language models. To give a bit of history, the first pre-trained language model was released in 2018. This was the BERT model. The basic idea behind a pre-trained transformer-based language model is that the transformer architecture is trained on a humongous amount of data, for example, all text on Wikipedia, to perform tasks such as predicting masked words or next sentence prediction. This allows models like BERT to have a very strong grasp of the English language. Now, individuals like me can take these pre-trained language models and fine tune the models on a specific small amount of data specific to an NLP task that I am interested in. This allows me to leverage the huge amount of training the BERT model has undergone and then apply the model to my specific application with just a tiny amount of training. It is important to note that the BERT model only makes use of the transformer encoder. So, to use the BERT model for tasks like sentiment analysis, where a sentence must be classified as either positive or negative, we have to add on a classification head on top of the BERT model that takes the embeddings from the BERT model and then produces a binary prediction. Of course, 2018 was a long time ago in the world of AI, and hence there have been lots of pre-trained transformer-based language models since then. Also in 2018, OpenAI released GPT, which hoped to be able to generate its own text, 
This model only uses the transformer decoder. Then in 2019, further mainstream pre-trained language models included ExcelNet, Roberta, Albert, GPT-2, and BART. The important point to note is that all these pre-trained language models have the same underlying architecture of either the transformer encoder, transformer decoder, or both the transformer encoder and decoder. The only difference between these pre-trained language models is that they have different training regimes, different training data, and different tasks on which they are optimized. Continuing on the timeline to 2020, we were introduced to Electra and GPT-3, which, which has been talked about quite a lot about in the media as the future of AI. Finally, 2020 also saw the release of T5, which trains both the encoder and the decoder of the transformer. Remember, the task that we are interested in this video is of question generation, where our input is text and our output is also text. Therefore, the T5 encoder decoder architecture seems appropriate for this task, and it has demonstrated that it is able to generate state of the art results on various question generation benchmarks. So, if you want to build a question generation system, all you have to do is pick the T5 model from Hugging Face and fine tune it on a question generation dataset of your choice. Popular examples of datasets include the squad dataset reversed, or perhaps the learning queue dataset composed of question passage pairs from Khan Academy and transcribed TED Talks. What we haven't discussed yet is how do we actually assess how good a question generation system is after we have trained the system. To remind ourselves of the framework of any supervised learning task, we have an input to the model, and a corresponding label. The model generates a prediction. Our aim is to assess how close was our prediction to the label to quantitatively tell how good our model was. In the task of question generation, both the label and the prediction are text. So we need to choose appropriate metrics to assess the closeness. First, let's make some space to discuss our metrics. For question generation, popular metrics are a combination of the metrics used in other language generation tasks, such as summarization and machine translation. We can define the precision as the number of matching words in between the label and the prediction, divided by the total length of the prediction. For the example on the screen, this is simply four sevenths. Alternatively, we can define the recall with the same numerator but this time divided by the total length of the label, which comes out to be about one third. The important point to note here is that we have calculated the precision and recall by counting individual words. Treating words on their own is known as calculating metrics based on unigrams. Often, it is better to consider bigrams, for example, which consider pairs of words for the metrics instead. People go on to consider trigram and larger n-grams too for the metrics, as often this is more appropriate compared to matching individual words. Finally, given we have values for precision and recall, a popular metric to find the geometric mean between these measures is the f-score, where the beta value controls the importance of the precision relative to the recall. With a lower value of beta, precision is favored. In actual implementation, an approximately precision-based metric is known as blur, a recall-based metric as rouge, and some combination of precision and recall is approximated by the meteor score. In general, research papers will tend to report the blur, rouge, and meteor scores for the question generation systems on some evaluation data set. However, there is still a major problem with the current setup described. Consider the case we have our passage of text from before, for which we want to generate questions. As before, the reference question for this passage was given as, what role does Dura's death play in this novel for the reviewer? However, there are multiple possible questions that can be generated from a passage, which are all equally acceptable. Hence, it seems very unfair 
to compare the prediction of a question generation model against a single reference example because there is no reason for the generated question to be the same as this reference question. Thus, it is very clear that metrics such as Bleu, Meteor and Rouge are inappropriate for question generation tasks due to the wide range of possible questions that are completely unrelated for the same input passage. Interestingly, this problem remains as an existing challenge in the area of question generation research, as people are unsure how to fairly assess question generation using automated metrics. So I would love to hear some of your ideas in the comments about possible methods you can think of for the assessment of question generation. For now, we have to stick to using subjective human evaluation to decide whether our question generation system is good or not.